Hi everyone, I'm Arfa and today, Salisha and I will be presenting a video critique of the show Grey's Anatomy Season 19. So we will be analysing the theories of the workplace communication from the show. Before we begin, let me brief you a little bit about the show in case some of you never heard of it before. Uh, so if you don't already know, Grey's Anatomy is an American medical series portraying the lives of surgical interns, residents and also attendings at the Grey Sloan Hospital. So this series depicts all the con uh, workplace conflicts, professionalism, ethics of each member as they also try to juggle their own uh, personal issues. Like the rest of the seasons, season 19 highlights the growth of the characters and we get to see how they evolve uh, into not only better medical practi practitioners but also into better people. So without further ado, let's watch the first scene. Ah! Dr. Schmidt, don't forget to brace the head. Fix your face, Schmidt. Okay. Okay, Ragda, one more big push and let's go. What? Oh. I know. I'm sorry, I have to. You promised, I vouched for you. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. So based on the scene that you saw just now, it is a clear representation of negative form of nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication plays a vital role in reflecting one's professionalism and the lack of thereof. So as a doctor handling such a critical moment in his patient's life, Dr. Schmidt failed to control his facial expressions and appeared just as distressed as the mother in labor. So Dr. Schmidt does not particularly enjoy working in the obstetric, obstetrics and uh, gynecology department and unfortunately we can clearly see it from his face. He was blatantly struggling to keep his composure, making him seem unprofessional in my opinion. This will ultimately affect his patient's trust in him, and to be honest, I would feel the same way. The last thing a person who is in an incredible amount of pain and anxiety would want is for their doctor to be just as frantic. So Dr. Schmidt should have remained calm and kept his composure, uh, be cool, despite what his, uh, pun uh, despite his own personal sentiment. Because a calm and composed doctor will help the patient to feel reassured and safe. Now let's watch the second scene. Doctor here now, and she wants him to sign off on the test. She does not trust us as far as she can kick us, and I cannot blame her. Doctor Griffith, I'll go get him. I had the same name. And Mrs. Collins, her first name is Jane, and I said, are you Jane? And the other lady, she said yes, and I guess they had the same name. You used the first name. Well, I was trying to be more personal because I was about to tell her her son was brain dead. Yeah, but you can see now why we don't do that. Yes. Meanwhile, who did you talk to? Is there someone named Jane walking around now who, who thinks that her child is brain dead no, and no, he isn't? No, I checked. Her name is Jane Miller and her son is brain dead. The second scene is an example of lack of reliability and ethics. As a medical practitioner, Dr. Adams, the intern, made a grave mistake of addressing his patient's next of kin by their first name, putting him and the entire team in a sticky situation. This happened because he assumed that the first Jane he saw was the mother of his patient when it's not. Uh, this mistake is not only careless, but also very irresponsible considering he was about to deliver the news that her son was officially declared as brain dead. You can only imagine the real mother's reaction. Of course, she was hysterical and she blamed the entire team and questioned their reliability as they were capable of making such a blunder. This situation could have taken into a much worse turn if the other Jane's son was not actually declared brain dead as well. I believe medical practitioners should maintain professionalism at all times and that includes addressing patients and their kinsmen uh, formally to avoid any legal issues and to avoid misunderstanding. Now let's move on to the next scene. What are you doing? I screwed up. I just want to make sure she's okay. You want to scrub in? <laughs> For real because I'm pretty sure I'm getting fired later. <laughs> well, if they haven't fired you yet, you still got a shot. Look, here's the deal. We all have bad days. We all make mistakes. You just gotta learn from them. You learn from them, you're good. Right? What'd you learn today? <laughs> uh, raise my hand before talking, save the shame for the end of the day, and use full names when speaking with next of kin. Yes. Okay. That's good. Come on. 
end your day better than it started. Okay, let's go. Come on, let's go. We all make mistakes and end your day better than it started. This final scene is the best representation of a supportive communication. Dr. Nick, a senior attending, came in and told Dr. Adams to join his surgery. While the quote earlier may only seem like a few stream of words, I believe it holds a lot of meaning and a lot of weight. And it can easily be a pivotal moment in the intern's life as he was feeling dejected and uh, from the mistake that he did earlier, believing that he was about to be fired on his first day of working. So this kindness, the kindness that uh, and understanding that Dr. Nick extended will motivate Dr. Adams to do better, to learn from his, his mistakes and to just try harder at becoming a better doctor. I genuinely believe that it is a senior's responsibility to show the newcomers the ropes and allow them to grow from their mistakes instead of punishing them, judging them and shaming them. That way, an employee can evolve into better personnel, which in turn will benefit the company or organization that they are working for. So that's all for me. Thank you. Moving on to scene four. He just started breathing really hard, then he made this choking sound. Is he dead? He's in cardiac arrest. He needs to be intubated. Should I get Dr. Altman? No, there's no time. Mrs. Peters, I need you to step outside. But Harold? Well, we're going to take care of him, okay? Wait, you're going to do it? Nope. I'm going to walk you through it now. Switch with me. Okay, don't overthink this. Suda, make sure you have everything ready that you need. Test the tube. The tube looks good. Style it. Okay, grab the scope. Okay. Other way. Oh, sorry. Visualize the cords. Okay. Ready? Okay, I can see them. Take the two. Insert it. Not much time here, so one fluid in motion. Trust your instincts on the ankle. Oh, I got it through. Cuffs up. Let's start bagging. Well. Breath sounds on both sides. Breath nice sounds work. on both sides. Nice work, Yasuda. Airway is secured. All we need to do now is uh, get a circulation back. Good job. From the previous scene, we can see that it is um, a positive form of interpersonal communication in a formal working place. It shows that Dr. Owen, who was an attending at that time, um, was asking uh, an intern, who is Dr. Yasuda, to save the patient's life by giving a proper instruction to her to intubate the patient um, in a critical situation. It shows that to us, um, it is important to make a very quick decision making in a critical situation like that, especially when it relates with the patient's life. Also, Dr. Owen, who is a professional doctor, uh, he shows professionalism by instructing the guardian of the patient um, to stay calm and just let them handle the situation. In the end, uh, Dr. Yasuda has successfully saved the patient's life and she received appraises and congratulations from Dr. Owen as a form of appreciation to her because uh, she successfully saved the patient's life. It is very important um, to praise people as a form of motivation in future critical situations. As a recommendation, it is very important to praise and congratulate other people, uh, even between colleagues or even other workers just as a form of uh, motivation for them uh, to act nicely um, in, a, in a critical situation and also places can make someone stay. Moving on to scene 5. Two. Was there an attending in the room? It's the ER, Teddy. There's about three attendings in this area at all times. Was one specifically watching you? One specifically had been barking between 4 and 7, so yeah, I assumed she was still here. Do you need something? Mika Yasuda, reporting for Dr. Hunt Service. I'm his intern today. <laughs> you know, you might want to find a new service. Yeah, Dr. Hunt used to be chief of trauma, and then he lost his mind, so now I'm chief of trauma. Yeah, also, she's my lovely wife, the mother of my children. Her favorite color is blue. Did she really need to know that? Yes, to humanize you. Moving on to scene 5, uh, in this scene, it shows a negative personality and conflict communication that happens between, in a working place. In this scene, it shows that Dr. Owen and Dr. Altman is trying to discuss their personal issues in front of an, uh, in front of an intern and also in a uh, hospital situation. It shows the lack of professionalism between them as uh, personal issues should not be discussed at a working space. 
It is a very inappropriate act to discuss about personal issues at a working space um, because it may lose respect of other colleagues and also the patients who heard them quarrel in front of them. In addition, talking with loud voices at a hospital is a very bad attitude from a doctor because hospital should be a place, uh, should be a quiet place um, for a patient because they need rest and also they need uh, times to heal. As a recommendation, personal matters should not be discussed at a working place and also they need to keep borders between them uh, as personal issues should not be this should not uh, allowed at hospital and professionalism should be implied between them. Next is the last scene. Are you flirting with me on a sick patient's leg? No. No, 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 no. no. Crap, no, that is not me flirting. That is me being an encouraging teacher, supportive in an appropriate way. I didn't put a winky face next to it or anything. I genuinely don't want you to cut off the wrong leg. Moving on to the last scene. In this last scene, it shows inappropriate ethics and behavior between an attending to his interns. An attending should show a proper way of surgery to his interns. However, Dr. Kwan, who was an attending in charge, does not imply a professional way in teaching his surgery. It is very inappropriate of him to write something on a patient's leg uh, and not being serious about it. Uh, his intern felt uncomfortable due to his gestures and misjudged him from being 30. It is very inappropriate and very lack of professionalism of Dr. Kwan, who was supposedly teach other interns about how to do a, an orthopedic surgery because it relates with the patient's life. To conclude, based on all the incidents above, it taught us the importance of implying professional ethics and behavior at a working place. It can be uh, among workers or colleagues or even uh, from higher rankings to lower rankings. Professionalism is important in maintaining a healthy working environment uh, um, to avoid any misconception and arguments. Especially in the medical field, we uh, are, we are related with a patient's life. Uh, therefore, it's in, it is important for a healthcare workers to be professional um, in doing their duties. Last but not least, professionalism does not only involve in medical field, but also it involves in other sectors too. And also, it is important uh, to respect each other in a working place because everyone deserves respect. And um, by being respect to each other, we can create a healthy environment. That is all from us um, about our video critics of Grey's Anatomy. Thank you!